Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Highway to Hell. And so here we are, we're fixing my mistake I made in the last episode. So in the last episode, I had a giant stack of books and I was like, oh wow, this is way more than the previous year. And I remembered the stacks getting smaller and smaller every year. Well, it turns out I just didn't put a divider in because normally I put dividers into stuff and uh, to, to keep the years apart, but I guess I ran out of dividers. <laughs> so so this uh, these two years weren't divided. So I apologize for that in the last episode. So we corrected that at the end of the last episode and we're gonna start here today. This technically did come out in you know May. So we've been going from May of one year to April of the following year. So technically this does start us off Ghost Rider 1945. This is, you know, the World War II Ghost Rider, um, like a story in there. And I think this might even be the last issue of Midnight Suns. Maybe. There might be one or two more. I can't remember, but I feel like that one might be the last one. Um, but I may be wrong. So where we're starting off here, uh, where we end in the last episode, was Snowblind. So this, at first I thought this was Iceman. <laughs> but uh, but you can see shackles around his wrist and stuff. He's a completely different character. I don't know much about the issues we're going to talk about today. I, when I bought these on eBay and I got them in a stack, I think issues 70 to 85, I paid like 20 or 25 bucks for, uh, plus like maybe like, you know, eight bucks shipping and handling or something like that. So it was like th less than $35 for sure. I know I did not spend that much. Um, so one of my checks from Lego, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this. Like my check was higher than I thought it was going to be. And so I, I saw someone on eBay you know, having a good deal. And granted, some of these are dinged up. They're not in great condition, but these issues are hard to find. As we get closer to the end of the book, there was a smaller print run on each issue. Each issue kept shrinking and shrinking and shrinking, and it just got harder and harder to find. So, um, so yeah, so this is where we get into the stuff that is written by Ivan Velez Jr. And I read a lot of the stuff as a kid. I, you know, kept collecting as a kid, but there were gaps I had in my collection. I'm sure, I know I had this issue and a couple other ones, but I lost them or they, you know, they got lost in a collection or in a move because I've moved so many times. So stuff like that just happens. Or sometimes, you, you know, I give a collection to a friend and I'm just like, hey, just I want to make sure they go to a good home. And then the collection has issues in it that I didn't mean for to be in that box, you know, and I didn't double check it. So, yeah, it happens, you know. So I had to rebuy some of these. But I remember owning some of these and I never had an issue with Ivan Velez coming in after Howard Mackey. I, of course, prefer the Howard Mackey stuff because it, it really felt personal. Howard Mackey was a kid uh, from Brooklyn, I believe, and, uh, and, uh, and he wrote about Dan Ketch and was like, yeah, I want Dan Ketch to kind of do things that I did. I, you know, I hung out in graveyards. I wanted Dan Ketch to hang out in graveyards. You know, I, you know, these are just things I did. And so the character did them. And I was like, you know, that's cool. You know, I, I always thought it made it have a more personal touch. So obviously Ivan doesn't have that personal touch but I still felt like he was a capable writer. And so a lot of people kind of weren't a fan of some of this era stuff, but then there are people out there like me who were a fan of it. And so personally, I just, I liked it. I liked the, some of the stuff Ivan did, um, but I was more critical of it than I was of Howard stuff. But like I said, uh, you know, I think Howard really was devoted to this character and Ivan, it was a job for him, but it was a job I thought he felt, you know, he took very seriously. I thought he did a good job. So we have issue 74 here, the killer revealed. I don't remember much of that story either. Um, but you have Johnny Blaze now that he's been back in the book a little bit. Um, you get to see him. I think that was one of the things Ivan wanted to do was bring back Johnny and do a couple more things with him. Obviously, in issue 75 here, Ivan brings back Vengeance. And it's a two-part story, I think. So this is part one, issue 75. Um, then we also have an Over the Edge uh, story. So we had issue three of Over the Edge previously. So after Nick Fury was killed by you know uh, Frank Castle by Punisher, they still kept the Over the Edge storyline going. And this was just like a... I don't know, it was like a maxi series. It was like nine or 10 issues. They were 99 cents each, which was awesome. Marvel was putting out like Untold Tales of Spider-Man. I think that was 99 cents. And there was, I think, an X-Men animated book or some kind that was 99 cents. So Marvel for a while was throwing out these $1 books, which was awesome. And the cool thing was, is you would get a bunch of artists and writers cutting their teeth on this stuff, you know? So it'd be like, all right, you may not buy it for the creative team, but it's only 99 cents. So you're probably gonna buy it because Ghost Rider's in it, or there was issues with Daredevil. I think there was a Hulk issue. So yeah, pretty cool. I always like this stuff, the Over the Edge stuff, but I have all the Ghost Rider issues in here. Issue three and issue eight of Over the Edge had Ghost Rider in them. And then here's part two of the Spirit, uh, of the Vengeance battle, and it's a sideways cover. I think it's, it might even be a sideways issue. So I think that's why they drew it like that. I think Marvel did a couple of those around this time as well. Uh, we have Ghost Rider 77 with Doctor Strange, which is great. Uh, then we're going to be coming up on the new costume here soon, Dark, Bla uh, Dark Past Unleashed. Uh, I don't remember this character too much, actually. I don't know if uh, they ever appeared again after this, but 
um, neat looking, got the claw hands and stuff. Uh, but yeah, this is the one I kind of remember. This is where they, he looks a little bit like Speed Demon. <laughs> He's like, his motorcycle is red. So red and yellow kind of become his new colors. And you can kind of see him, you know, peeling off the leather, leather jacket and stuff like that to an extent. Um, face my wrath and die. A dangerous new era, a bold new look. History starts here. So when the sales were kind of, like I said, they were already on the decline, even when Howard was writing it after they killed Ghost Rider and brought him back so soon, I think some people were just kind of like, eh, you know, like I feel like the, the majority of people, because this was a book that sold, you know, really, really well uh, for a book called Ghost Rider. And so it was kind of unprecedented and it caused them to launch all kind of stuff like the Spirits of Vengeance book and then also the Midnight Suns thing and Blade, Morbius, Darkhold got their own books. Um, you know, Doctor Strange was involved in a lot of it. So it kind of helped create a dark universe. You know, like right now we're hearing all these rumblings from, you know, because this is 2020, July 2020 when I'm recording this. We're about to hit August soon. And, you know, Marvel's talking about, oh, after Empire, we're going to send a chunk of Marvel into space and we're going to do a lot of space stories. Well, this in the 90s was them doing a bunch of supernatural stories and they had their own pocket of the universe, but that started to dissolve and people lost interest for whatever reason. So at this point, I think they were just like, let's completely reinvent the character. Let's come up with a new look for him. Let's add some new elements to him, his powers and stuff. And so that's where this begins, man. Issue 79 of Ghost Rider came out in November of 96. Um, this one I had to pick up. I think Koi Fam does the artwork in here. This is another 99 cent book that Marvel put out called Marvel Fanfare. And uh, this was one I didn't even know existed. I mean, I knew Marvel Fanfare was a book, but I didn't know this particular story existed where it's Ben Riley, the Spider-Man clone. This is when he was Spider-Man and he's teaming up with, uh, with Ghost Rider here. And I think they're fighting a Yeti or a Wendigo or something like that. Um, I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty neat. I flipped through it and I was like, yeah, these are cool. I miss the 99 cent stuff that Marvel would put out sometimes. Uh, yeah, this is cool. So I, I found this on eBay and I was like, all right, I need this for my collection because I didn't know it existed. So yeah, and you have a team up with Ben Riley Spider-Man there. So I like that. I like when I like a character like Ghost Rider, you know, I want to see how he interacts with like the X-Men, you know, Wolverine, Punisher, like the other favorite characters of mine from Marvel, uh, because I want to see what his personality brings to those interactions because I I think that helps you learn about the character. Doing solo stories with the character is great, but then having them team up with Valkyrie here, what a great idea because that's like, it's like, all right, you're going to bring in a, a Thor as guardian type character into the storyline. How does a guy like Ghost Rider, who's kind of from hell, interact with, you know, essentially, you know, an angel warrior, you know, Valkyrie from Asgard in a way. So I love this stuff. I thought what Ivan did, he was like, he was going back to the roots of the character of like, hey, let's do team ups and let's have them interact with other characters from time to time and characters he's maybe never met before. So him with Valkyrie, I thought was a cool, uh, cool addition to the story. Um, so yes, here is the Top Cow crossover. Uh, as some of you know, I used to work at Top Cow. I worked there very briefly, uh, but I really liked it there. I thought all the people there were really awesome. And uh, one of the guys who worked there with me, Ryan Katie, is now a writer in comic books. You know, he started out there as like, you know, like me, we were kind of like, uh, you know, did small odd jobs. I was helping out emailing, you know, to comic stores and, you know, and, and trying to boost sales on our books and, you know, do the uh, solicits and things like that and work with people on, on that regard. I didn't work there very long, like I said, maybe a couple months, but, uh, but Ryan there, he came in towards the end of my uh, time at Top Cow and they couldn't have hired a better person. Honestly, Ryan's one of the aw most awesome people in the world. And so, uh, so when I think of Top Cow, I think of Matt Hawkins, Mark Silvestri, Elena, you know, the people that work there. And obviously um, I think of Ryan and how gr big his career is getting uh, and how much he loves comic books and how good he is at writing them. Uh, he's a really awesome dude. So yeah, Top Cow crossover, Devil's Reign. This was like a 10 maybe part crossover and every issue was different team ups. So again, to learn more about the character, it was cool. You get to see Ghost Rider team up with Cyblade here, who's a Top Cow character. So I thought that was neat. And Ivan Velez Jr. drew it. Uh, and I think there's another one too. It might be coming up in this episode or maybe the next episode. I can't remember. Um, but I think there's one where Ghost Rider teams up with someone called Ballistic. So yeah. So then we have Strange Intruder, issue 81. January, now we're into 1997. Shocking guest star inside. I don't remember who the shocking guest star is, so I'm sorry. You'll have to read the book. A lot of these are not available in digital form, I don't think, so you've got to track, uh, track down the single issues. But I hope that at some point they do something again with Ghost Rider. I would love to see an Ivan Velez Jr. collection of trade paperbacks, maybe two volumes, and you can put like 
10 or 12 issues in each volume. That way you get, you know, you can get all these stories in there. Um, so you get Moon Boy here with a Devil Dinosaur and Howard the Duck. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I think Ivan was like, hey, we're going to have some fun. Like, I think at this point they probably knew the book wasn't going to last much longer. So they were like, screw it. Let's just do a bunch of wacky fun stuff in this. So they do, and it's fantastic. It's fun. Yeah, here's the ballistic issue. So chapter three of Devil's Reign. So Ghost Rider was in part two and three. But I think Wolverine, I think, teams up with Witchblade. I think there's a Darkness one, maybe, I think, too. Uh, so Ghost Rider's, you know, interaction is very limited just in the early issues. And I think he might pop up in a panel or two in some of the other issues. But I have uh, yet to know that for sure. And I don't want to track down those issues and spend money and be wrong, you know. So that's why I haven't got some of them. So until someone confirms that for me, I think this is where my Ghost Rider, Top Cow, Devil's Reign crossover stuff ends. Uh, and that's a cover by Philip Tan, I believe. Yeah. Who still draws comics to this day so again a lot of these artists are still around pop man i think uh, i think i said koi fan earlier i think i meant pop man um pop man did some of the artwork here for the final issues and does a really great job you got uh issue 83 here a mystery from beyond the grave comes bearing death so that's pretty neat um burn baby burn it's a what if storyline uh, and again it's uh it has the ivan velez uh, salvador rocco redesign of ghost rider um, I think Salvador redesigned it, but then you have Mephisto here. So this is a what if story. And I was just like, you know what? It's Dan Ketch. I got to have it, but I don't think I've ever actually read this issue or if I have it, it's pre aneurysm and I don't remember it. Uh, I'm sure I, so a lot of these things I know I've, I have, cause this, this run means so much to me. It's, it's one of my favorite comic runs of all time. I mean, I know people talk about Chris Claremont X-Men, which I, I like, uh, don't get me wrong. There's really good stuff in that. Uh, I like Jeff Johns' Green Lantern. That's a really great run too, especially for a longtime Green Lantern fan to get a big run like that from, from, uh, you know, from Jeff was awesome. And to strat, you know, send Green Lantern into the new stratosphere of fandom and, and get him to be a, essentially a rock star for a couple of years. It was great, you know, but uh, still, I think every run pales in comparison to my love for this Ghost Rider run. Honestly, it's that good, uh, I feel. Um, and so I know I read a lot of these, but unfortunately, you know, when you're dealing with memory loss and aneurysms, like it, it's hard to remember exactly everything you, you, you love about it. Um, but uh, but yeah, so, but obviously I worked really hard to complete this, this collection. And I think this was, this what if was one of the ones that I um, tracked down. No, actually, no, I, I found this like in a dollar bin somewhere. So yeah, I just saw it and I was like, oh, wow, do I have that? I don't know. I, and I bought it thinking I maybe already had it, and then I got home, and I was like, oh, look, I didn't have it. That's cool. Uh, Ghost Rider 84, Vampires Walk the Night, Beware the Daughter of Dracula. Yeah, and again, holding his head. Everybody loves to rip his head off and hold it. If you notice her design here with the, the sleeves and stuff, I can't remember if Crimson was out at this point or not, but Crimson is one of my um, favorite indie books from, I, I, God, it was, who was it? Cliffhanger, I think, was the original company that produced them but it's what introduced me to Humberto Ramos uh, and so Brian Augustine I think wrote some of the scripts Ramos came up with the concept and it was about a kid named Alex Elder who was a half human half vampire and he kind of had gloves that were you know fingers were exposed so I don't know which design came first but they're very similar um oh yeah you know what I did pick up this issue so this came out um in April Devil's Reign Chapter 8, Silver Surfer, Weapon Zero. I think Dan Ketch appears for a panel in this. I can't remember, but I think this was one of the, this is the finale of the of the crossover. And so I think someone said, hey, Ghost Rider shows up in this. So I have, I think I've yet to flip through it, or maybe I did and confirmed it. I can't remember. So it's in my collection. So I must have at some point flipped through it to try to confirm that. But, um, but yeah, this is the end of the Devil's Reign crossover. So like I said, it was a bunch of one shots. Um, but they said on the top which chapter they were so that you knew, you know, where you were when you were reading. Because there's no number one, number two, you know, because every issue was called something different. It was a different team up between different characters. So in this one, it's Silver Surfer and Weapon Zero. But I think because it's the finale, everyone shows up in this at one point to battle, you know, against the big threat. So, yeah, so this is, uh, now we're in 1997, and we're in April of 1997. So the next episode as far as this collection goes will be the final one because it'll take us from 97 
into early 98 when the series ended. And so that's what we'll talk about in the next collection video. So I'm glad I got a couple of these out for you guys and filmed all these today. I'm going to save the final one for, you know, for another time. Um, and then we're going to go and catch up on reviews and stuff of, of the uh, current comic book as well. So my goal today was to take the day off and just focus on Ghost Rider. And I'm glad I did because it was fun going down memory lane, so, or at least as much of my memory and I can, you know, remember in memory lane for me. But still, I thought this was kind of fun to go through. And I like doing these collection videos just so you guys kind of see. I'm, you know, these videos aren't too you know, remember everything that happened and talk about everything that happened. They're literally just to show you the collection and every appearance that Dan Ketch has made in the 90s. And this is pretty much most of them. I mean, if not all of them, I, I can't imagine there's too many things I'm leaving out here. So the next episode will be the final year of Dan Ketch Ghost Rider. And then from there, maybe we'll talk a little bit about Ghost Rider 2099. And we'll re review the current issue that came out like six months ago. And then we'll talk about the uh, 90s series of it. And because I have almost that whole run, I think I'm missing like three or four issues. So maybe I'll try to track those down uh, before I come, you know, we make the collection video. But if I don't, you know, I'll have an incomplete collection. Not a big, not, not, a, not a big deal. But uh, yeah, so let me know what you think of this year, the, the penultimate year, all the, you know, the second to last year of Ghost Rider for Dan Ketch. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see y'all in hell. Peace.